Hi guys, today I am here with a classics book haul. Now I don't like doing lots of book hauls because I'm very conscious now of haul culture and how hauls just kind of encourage this buy, 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 which I don't think is what books should be about. But in this book haul, I wanted to shine a light on some smaller presses, some small publishers who are publishing books you might not have heard about before and I certainly hadn't heard about. I've got a few that I've bought that I was really excited about and others that I bought because I hadn't heard about them and I thought when I read about them they sounded brilliant but I knew hadn't been talked about on booktube before and that you probably don't know about and so I'm really excited to introduce them to you and to read them myself. I want to start though by talking to you about two E.M. Forster books that I recently bought. I am loving E.M. Forster's books at the moment. I read A Room With A View last year and I really liked it, I thought it was great but I recently read Howard's End and I am so in love with this book. I think it's going to become one of my all time favourite classics because it's so amazing. I want to read loads more Edwardian fiction now because of it and I just cannot stop thinking about Ian e. Forster and his writing. So I bought Morris at the start of the year because lots of you had recommended it to me but I wanted to buy Where Angels Fear to Tread which was his first published book. Ian e. Forster deals a lot in his books with class and the differences between class but also how class was changing as the Victorian period ended and the Edwardian period began. So whilst it deals with class, it then deals with age as well and generational differences. And in Howard's End, you have this idea of Only Connect, which I think really links a lot of his books. So Only Connect is quite a complex idea and I think it's not very easily definable. But the way that I would define Only Connect is that every character is linked in some way and every action that they do is linked and every action has consequences. So in Howard's End you have the consequences of the character's actions and how you might not see those consequences for quite a long time but eventually they come out and how when one character involves themselves in somebody else's life you then have this kind of ricochet effect um, and so one character affects one character affects another character and it's something that I would love to explore in my own writing. It's something that I can't stop thinking about because it's something I haven't seen in books before. I feel like Ian Forster really thought about the actions in his book and it's not just about characters, it's about plot as well. And it's just amazing. I cannot get enough. I bought this Penguin English Library edition. I love my Penguin English Library editions but I do have quite a lot now. And on the back it says that this is a subtle attack on decorous Edwardian values and a humanely sympathetic portrayal of the clash of two cultures which is very typical for E.M. Forster. I'm so excited to read this and I don't think I'm going to be able to hold off for long because I just need more E.M. Forster in my life but after I've read this I would really love to read E.M. Forster's aspects of the novel which was a series of lectures that has been published and I love reading non-fiction about writing and books and literature in the style of Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. It was confusing then because E.M. Forster wrote A Room with a View Virginia Woolf wrote A Room of One's Own and I was like what am I talking about but I really love the way that these authors shed light on their writing process and what they think about writing and how they view other authors writing and I sometimes don't agree with it but I think that's what makes these lectures so fantastic because A Room of One's Own started as lectures too. I think when you're reading non-fiction it's good not to agree with everything that and the author is telling you. I think it's really good to evaluate your own views as well as you are reading it. So I feel like books like this really challenge my views as a person, not just as an author or as a reader, but as a person too. And I think that's really great in order to assess what you think and also to assess what other people think. I like those kinds of balanced opinions which I think are really important to hold. And then another book that I bought was Claudine at School by Colette. This was recently made into a film, not the book but the story behind the book. So Colette originally published under her husband's name but she was a prolific popular writer in France at the time that she was writing but she wasn't allowed to own that she was writing these books and I would love to watch the film but I think I would like to read the book before I do so so it can kind of aid my knowledge before I watch it. This is about a rebellious teenager called Claudine who is fighting with her headmistress for the affections of a new teacher at the school and it's a series as well so there's lots more books and lots more stories but I think the main story behind this book is about a literary icon and the start 
of a writing revolution for women, for women owning their voices and not being able to give their stories away. There are so many women behind men's stories and I think Colette is one of the most interesting ones. On to the small press classics now and we have three books published by Handheld Press. These are books that I really love. I love these editions. I love how they feel quite bulky as you're holding them. They feel like books that you are going to love owning and they all match too, which is really nice. So the one I'm most excited to read is Kingdoms of Elfin by Sylvia Townsend Warner. I think this was her last published collection of short stories set in this fantasy world that she created. And actually the first book that she wrote was called Lolly Willows and that was the beginning of this fantasy story. And I am fascinated by women's fantasy worlds. I'm sure you've heard me talk before about about Emily Bronte and her fictional world of Gondor. And so one of the things I would love to do is to find out more about why women create fantasy and I'd love to talk more about women writing fantasy and how that has changed through the years. If you take something like Frankenstein, for example, that was really the start of science fiction. And yet now what we associate science fiction with is men's writing mostly. And so what I'd really like to do is chart women's writing and how it often goes under the radar in favour of other writing mainly by men. Usually I don't like to read the back of books but because this is a fantasy I feel like it's safer to read. So I'll tell you that it is about the court of Elfin which existed through history in our world and they have their own customs and manners, attendance and events. It's got history and comedy, romance and tragedy and it's a book for anyone who has heard the horns of Elfin in the distance at twilight as much as it is for readers who crave fine literature and are certain that elves and their kingdoms are fairy tale bosh. And that's something that Neil Gaiman said about it. So I can't wait to read this. I'm not a huge fantasy lover, but I feel like this is the kind of fantasy I really love that feels like it could be a part of our world too. We've then got Desire by Una L. Silberad, and this was published in 1908. So it's a piece of Edwardian fiction, which I am loving at the moment. This was one of the reasons that I was drawn to this book because I want to read more Edwardian fiction. I feel like now I've read Ian Forster I want to read more and I want to read some of the authors who have fallen under the radar too. This is about a woman called Desire whose father dies and he doesn't leave her any provision in his will and so it's about expectations and whether she will leave the things she knows behind in London and will she move to a small Staffordshire town away from anything she's ever known to do a job for a man called Peter. So it's about masculine as well as femininity. It's about expectations placed on us as men and as women. And I think that in this kind of Edwardian period, it's also going to be about changes as well. A lot of books in this period deal with changes as we move away from Victorian fiction into modernity and post-modernity. So it's kind of this halfway house, I feel like, Edwardian fiction. And I feel like you get some really interesting stuff because of that. You really do you feel like the tides are changing and you get to see more in literature than was acceptable before but at the same time there is this slight adherence to the Victorian rules and so it is quite a complicated time but I think that's what makes the fiction so much richer. And then the final book from Handheld Press is What Not by Rose McCauley. This is one I am super interested in because it's supposed to be a precursor to Aldous Huxley. Like I said I don't like reading from the back but this is again quite a complicated one. So this is about Kitty Grammont and Nicholas Chester who were in love but Kitty is certified as an A for breeding purposes while Chester has been uncertificated and may not marry. So it is really like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and it is kind of this science fiction look at what our purpose is as humans and whether we can regulate that. And it also was withdrawn from publication at one point because it dealt with the blackmail of a newspaper journalist which would have brought shame shame on the publishers and so it's quite a controversial book as well. Something that really fascinates me why some books are controversial and why others are not and kind of the censorship of controversial books in the style of Lady Chatterley's Lover or one of the books that Persephone Books just published which is called Despite
despised and rejected. That's another one like this that were withdrawn from publication or caused a lot of scandal and were actually censored. And so I think it's really important to be able to read books like this. And then the final books I want to show you are by a publisher called Hono and these are their Welsh women's classics. I am very proud of my Welsh heritage. My grandmother was Welsh and she was so proud of the fact and always brought me up to be proud of where I came from. So I spent a lot of time in Wales as a child around my Welsh relatives. I've been around people speaking Welsh and it's just something that I was always told that I should be proud of where I came from. And so I really would love to read more Welsh fiction, in particular books by Welsh women. Out of all of these, the one I am most excited to read is Jill by Amy Dillwyn, which is one of of Hono's most popular authors, I would say. They publish quite a lot of her books. And this is about same-sex relationships. And Amy Dillwyn in particular definitely put an autobiographical stance when she was writing Jill. This is about a gentlewoman who runs away to London in the disguise of a maid and then uses her position of a maid to get closer to her mistress. I've been reading lots of books recently about same-sex relationships in classics because it's something that I'd really like to talk about more on my channel. I think it's really important to acknowledge the feelings and desires of women throughout the ages because women were so often told that they couldn't have any sexual desire. It wasn't possible for them. Sexual desire was only something that men could possess. But actually women felt exactly the same way as men did and they also felt the same way about women as they could about men. And I think we do these women a disservice if we hide their stories and don't publish them. And that's why I think it's also really important to read them to keep their stories and their voices alive. The other Amy Dillwyn book that I bought was The Burglary or Unconscious Influence. And I'm not entirely sure what this one is about. I'm a little bit confused about the description of it, but I think it has a really interesting villain at the heart of it. And it's about the unconscious influence of others. Each of these Hono Classics editions has a really detailed, interesting introduction. And and in this one it says that A Burglary is ostensibly a broad-ranging novel of manners in the style of Thackeray's Vanity Fair, but also has recourse to the sensation genre, yet is also inventive and anticipatory of later developments in fictional styles. So as soon as I heard about the villain in this novel, I immediately thought of Wilkie Collins's A Woman in White and the incredible villain in there that just makes you feel uncomfortable as soon as you read about him. That is kind of what I'm hoping about in A Burglary. I'm not sure when I'm going to read this because I think I'm going to read Jill first and I've also got the Rebecca Rioter to read which I've owned for quite a while which is her most popular novel published by Hono Classics but I'm just really excited to explore Amy Dillwyn's writing and I can't believe that I haven't really heard about her before this. The next book I want to show you is Here Are Lovers by Hilda Vaughan, which is about the dangers of romanticism and looking at class and nationality, the differences between English and Welsh, but it's also set around the time of the second reform bill and the differences between classes and how it really wasn't acceptable for classes to mix. The protagonist in in this are described as the beautiful and bookish Letitia Wingfield and the impoverished would-be scholar Gronwy Griffith. So I'm hoping that this might be a little bit like Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy. So whereas that is about age, this might be more about class because I really like these kinds of tragic looks and you can kind of unravel the tragedy and see how things have changed since and where things went wrong. And I also think it's going to be great to read about English and Welsh nationality and how it was different during the Victorian period when this is set. Then we have Winter Sonata by Dorothy Edwards, which was her only published novel. She committed suicide six years after she wrote this and never published a thing after she published this. This is about gentility and being stifled as a woman, knowing your role in life, not wanting that, wanting something more for yourself. It was published in 1928, so a little bit later than some of these other books. But I think that, again, that's going to be great in seeing how things had changed. So it's going to be really great to read these books together and see how things had changed from the Victorian period 
right through to later on. One of the big themes in her writing was loneliness and isolation, but she also talks about gender and class, which I think is something that Hono really focus on in the books that they published. All of these books really have this running theme of gender, which I think is something that really concerned women then and still does. Another thing that is commented on is the unique device Dorothy Edwards uses of structuring the work by imitating a musical form. So I'm really excited to find out what that is about. And then the final book I want to show you is Gladys of Harlech by L. M. Spooner. This was a Victorian novel set during the Wars of the Roses in the 15th century, which is a time period I love reading about but haven't actually read a fiction novel set during this time. In particular, a Victorian fiction novel set during this time. I love reading old historical fiction because I think it says a lot about the time it was written too. So I love books like Sir Walter Scott's where he's writing about a time before for, but at the same time you get this kind of romantic look at it like you would read something now set in the past I feel like you can kind of see it through rose tinted glasses it seems more fascinating than maybe it would have been to live through that time period which I kind of feel is what historical fiction is about I feel like historical fiction is about exploring things that are going on in our lives now but through a lens of things that were happening then and so you often find that themes and events are linked this is a slightly longer novel in the style of the three volume Victorian novel but I think it's going to be great uh, I'm really just so interested to see how the themes of the 15th century are explored in the Victorian novel. So I really hope you enjoyed this classics book haul. I tried to do these books justice but obviously it is really difficult to talk about books that you haven't read and I'm very conscious of that when I make book hauls. I'm only gonna be able to talk about these books fully once I've read them so you'll have to watch out for them in my upcoming reading wrap-ups. I'm gonna try and read as many of these as possible. There are some in particular like Jill that I am so excited about reading and also the Kingdoms of Elfin as well. Well, I feel like those two are the ones I'm most excited to read and the ones I'm likely to read soon. I'd love to know in the comments if you've read any of these books and I'd also love to know what books you have bought recently that are classics that you think I might enjoy reading and that you would really recommend. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!